Okay, the, the main thing, I feel like everybody was definitely okay with the fact that the, the summation notation means that you're going to add up a bunch of things. I think everybody was totally fine with that part. Where it, where it gets confusing is you feel like you feel like you should be able to do this, like just have a regular equation and go from one number, whatever you want to start with, to wherever it ends. And then that's, that's definitely the break where it, it changes difficulty. So if you're given this as a problem to do, yeah, it, it's super easy. You, you just fill in three, four, and five and add up the answers and you're done. The main issue is the purpose we're using it for won't ever look like that. <clears throat> I, don't, I don't know a better way to say it other than that's going to be way too simple for the, our purposes. So ours isn't that different, though. So if you had a function, let's, let's pretend that's the function we're working with, OK? If that's the function we're working with, the way that we would work it is the numbers on the summation are going to represent the rec number of rectangles. So if we're doing 10 rectangles, well, then I would do 1 to 10. And then this would represent right-hand sum. And then instead of writing 2x plus 3, I can't just write an x. The x has to be replaced with, I don't know what we want to call it, the summation version of an x. And the summation version of the x was a plus delta x k. That's the main difference. Once, once you're OK with this fact, then everything today is going to be straightforward, simple. But I, I get that it's difficult for me to explain the differences between these. Um, but this is kind of what it boils down to, is we're never going to have a regular function equation written in the summation. The purposes we are using it for is only going to be adding up number of rectangles. And that's the only thing you're going to need to know it for on the AP test. So that's, that's why we're focused on it. It's not, summation can be used for a ton of things. And other math classes <coughs> will use it for their purposes and, and it, works, it works great. But for Calc, this is the only way we're using it. Sure, I'll just take it some point. I, I think everybody else has filled it, right? Are you just trying to awkwardly hand it back to me? I see. Nobody wants to actually just stand up. That's okay. I was going to roll over there anyway. I wasn't going to stand up either. <clears throat> Before we do anything today, is there parts of that equation you want me to explain or talk about? Because if you're not OK with all the parts of this, you're not going to get today at all. So that's kind of what I wanted to start with for like the review. OK, I was more interested in hearing from people that weren't. And if it's OK, if you don't want to speak up, you can always ask later. But yeah, go ahead. No. Uh, actually, you're right. I 100% I forgot to even write the width in this, what I wrote up here. Yep, I didn't write that in. So the a plus delta x is the x in summation. You're never going to write just x. So if you have a function like 2x plus 3, this whole thing will stand for the height. 
And then I 100% forgot to write the width, delta x. Yep, no, sorry about that, thank you. So those will be the only two parts we'll ever see. Go ahead, I can see you were trying to ask it. So because the numbers on the left don't stand for the x values on the x-axis, they stand for the which rectangle you're looking at. So plugging a 1 in means the first rectangle. When I plug a 1 in, I want to find the area of the first rectangle by plugging in a 1. And that, that's why it's a difficult conversion. Any, anything else up there? Do you want me to explain both the 1 and the 10? Any, I, I don't care what. Okay? I mean, to be 100% fair, you guys sometimes have a billion questions and ask nothing. And I hope you realize that, like, say, when you get to college, nobody's going to help you otherwise, right? Like, you're going to sometimes be in a class of 500 people. Like, Calc 1 at college is usually the one that's in an auditorium. And asking questions is near impossible. So the, the way you're going to have to be able to ask questions is just being proactive for yourself, whether you are working in a small study group with other people, whether you, I mean, like, a lot of times professors will have office hours you'll have to go to. But, like, you want to be proactive about your questions because a lot of times professors won't, won't stop to explain anything. So knowing, knowing right away is kind of critical. Okay, then let's go to today's portion. Now these notes don't really make, don't do a really good job of making the jump. <clears throat> so we made the jump yesterday to going from summation notation to trying to use summation notation on areas of rectangles. Today, the jump is supposed to be using that same notation, but an infinite number of rectangles. Yeah, I know, it's that. It's what we're doing. It doesn't really explain that, and that's kind of what I want to try to clarify. So we did section four already. And we talked about how the integral notation represents the area under the graph, between the graph and the x-axis, okay? Now, we only did it on like geometric shapes, basically. And that's because we don't know how to actually integrate yet. And that actually isn't going to be the hard part. It's just knowing what all this stuff stands for. But the integral symbol is actually represented by an infinite number of rectangles added up. That's what the integral symbol stands for. So this notation right here the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of the sum from 1 to the number of rectangles of the height times the width. So we are adding up an infinite number of rectangles. <clears throat> now here's the great thing. We don't actually have to do the limits. We don't actually have to do the summation part. Okay, on the AP test, what they're going to ask you to do is be able to go back and forth between the two notations. They will give you an integral symbol with an equation, and it'll say the integral from like 3 to 8, and it'll ask you to translate that, whether it's multiple choice. I don't think, I, I don't think I've ever seen it on free response. It's usually multiple choice. So then they would ask you which one of these is the correct version of summation notation. So you just have to know how to set it up and write them. You don't have to know how to actually do the math. So that's the good part. So it won't actually matter if the calculator has summation on it or not. I was kind of showing it yesterday because there's a few of them that we can check and things like that. 
but everybody's calculators can actually calculate the definite integrals. And we'll get to that. Hopefully, we'll get to it today. So here, this is very similar to what you'll have to do, even though this is a much longer version of a question. So it gives you a function, and the interval is from 0 to 4. And so we want to take this notation, which says find the area from 0 to 4 of this equation. And we want to write it as summation notation. So that's our job. That's our goal. Do you want me to write this down as a generic equation and kind of fill it out from there? Is that how you guys traditionally try to do it in your notes? Or homework, I should say? Okay. A lot of feedback. You guys are awesome. Thanks. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So the integral from A to B of f of x dx is going to be the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity of the sum uh, one rectangle to infinite number of rectangles, f of x sub k times delta x. So much notation. I know at the beginning of the year I tried to tell you one big difference between pre-calc and calc is the amount of notation given. This is pretty much a good highlight of that. Okay, well, we know we're going from 0 to 4, and the function was 1 half x squared plus 1. Now, the limit part won't ever be any different. There's nothing to fill out there. The limit portion is just saying that we're doing an infinite number of rectangles, and since you can't actually just plug in infinity, it's the limit. Oh, for kind of loud. If they ask you to do left hand limit instead of right hand limit, you would do 0, 10, minus 1, but it's still the same. Now, they stop asking you to do left or right because when you have an infinite number of rectangles, the left and the right is the same number because the rectangle actually has a zero width. So they don't, they don't usually care. And that's what I noticed in your homework is questions three through six on the front page. That's kind of what it's referring to. They don't tell you left or right. They don't tell you number of rectangles is it's kind of asking you to do this, even though it didn't really directly say. That's why it didn't specify number of rectangles or which side. Okay, now we get to the part which is where I think most of you have confusion. Is that probably correct? Okay, let's fill out delta x first because that's traditionally the easiest. Let's go with, oh, oh I sort of have a seating chart. Jonathan, do you think you can help me out? Yeah. Fill out delta x. Can you do 4 times 0 over 8? Over what? 8. 8? Oh, um, yeah, you're right. I was ignoring this part. My bad. You read the directions correctly. I was doing a different problem. I tend to do that and I'll apologize. So I'm doing an infinite number of rectangles. So what you said was correct. So instead of 4 minus 0 over 8, it's going to be 4 minus 0 over infinity, which would be n. So yeah, no, that was perfect. If we were doing 8 rectangles, it was exactly what you said. So instead of writing 4 over infinity, we're going to write 4 over n. 
Okay, f of x sub k, I feel like is the worst part for most students. The fact that it says f with a parentheses means that I am going to write this original function. The only thing I don't know, why is it right? It's not on the pen. The only thing I don't know is what to put in place of x. So instead of me writing 1 half x squared, I'm going to write 1 half something squared plus 1. And the parentheses there is what you're going to write <clears throat> the x value in summation. That was that, that was that x sub k that I wrote and read on the other page. So that's a plus delta x k. Um, Jonathan, do you want to call on somebody else? Alex. Alex. What's a? A would be zero. Perfect. So I can write zero plus if I want, for just for your notes, but otherwise normally you wouldn't. Okay, what was delta x? Um, uh, x. Four. four over n, yeah. It was actually the thing we wrote down already, correct. So zero plus four over n, k. And then this would be how we would write the definite integral as a summation notation equation. Can't hear you. Yes. Go ahead. You would if you were going to manually find this answer. You definitely can't find this answer because you're going to be plugging in an infinite number of rectangles. So yes, you would if you were going to actually do it. We can't. So if you didn't ignore the equal subdivision, what would be the difference here? Like oh, if I didn't ignore the 8, yeah. instead of an n, okay. I would write an 8. Okay. That's all it is. And then the delta x would be different? In, in, wherever there's an n, you would write an 8. Okay. Yep. The equation works no matter how many rectangles they want. Okay. And you wouldn't write limit to infinity. Was this too much for the brain? Go ahead. So you said if you like a unit equal Yep. Correct. Because if you have a number in place of n, then you don't need to write limit as n approaches infinity. You, you technically only write the limit because you're not allowed to plug in infinity like normal. So you would just write the summation or what would Yeah. I mean, I guess. Yeah, it would be it would be kind of ridiculous to keep the limit part. Does the dx not matter? I'm not sure what you mean. The the dx has nothing to do with it. Yeah, we're going to learn about the dx as we go. No, that's a good question because I never talked about it at all. No, only in the answer. Okay, now you're also going to have part of your homework that's going to ask you to find this answer. <clears throat> so, if you have your calculator with today, I'll show you how to find that answer. There's two ways to do it. Yeah, we're doing okay on time. I think we'll be able to finish everything. Okay, one way is you're going to type the equation into y equals. Uh, 1 half x squared plus 1. Yeah? Okay, hit graph. And if we want to find the area, oh, should I wait? Am I going too fast? I see some people just opening their calculators. All I did was put in the equation into y equals and hit graph. This method works on the 83s and 84s. 
Okay, remember how we used to go to the calculation menu to find zeros and intersections and all that? Well, one of them, which you wouldn't have recognized before, was the, the integral. So if you go to the calculation menu and hit number seven, it's going to find the integral. Now, it has to know where to begin and end. So ours was zero to four. So we would just hit zero, enter, then four, enter. And then it will draw what you asked for to double check. And so the area under that curve would be 14 and 2 thirds. Now this is going to be a method for you to check your work. I'm just going to tell you right now, this only works on definite integrals, which I know you don't know the difference yet. We're going to get some integrals that don't have numbers on the bottom and top. Calculator can only calculate things with numbers. Didn't hear any word there. Oh, uh, I hit second trace. And I went to the calculation menu. And then number seven should be integral. So this is just one method. You don't have to actually use the graph. Um, when you put the zero like, before, where did it look bad? Or uh, at the bottom of the screen, it will say lower bound. And then I hit zero, enter, and then it'll say upper bound, four, enter. Okay, the other method is just from the home screen. You don't have to graph anything. So our normal hidden menu, uh, fn int is for integration. Oh, I have it on classic, don't I? Yeah, I do. So it should set it up and show it exactly like an integral, and you would just type it in as exactly as you see it on the problem, 0 to 4, and then the equation in this spot. And then an x at the end. <clears throat> One thing to keep in mind is it's always just going to give you a decimal approximation it's generally never going to give you a perfect answer. This one we can definitely tell is two-thirds just because of what it is, but... Um, so that's just one way of checking. Six point three should have been exact as well. 6.1 wasn't because we were doing rectangles under curved areas. 6.3, you were given geometric shapes. So we were able to find them all exactly with geometric formulas. So this is how you go about finding the exact area of a curved one. Okay, so that's just how to type it in the calculator. Um, next page, right here. Why don't you guys see if you can fill in box number one, or would you rather me go through box number one with you, and you can see if you can do two? Go through one, okay? So the limit expression for this definite integral, well, I'm gonna have to start with the limit as the number of rectangles goes to infinity. I'm really bad at writing the sigma symbol, by the way, so try not to copy mine. I'm, I don't know, it just seems wrong to write. It looks like a three when I do it, so I don't. Okay, so the number of rectangles was infinity. Next we're gonna have, actually it doesn't matter which order you put it, you could do delta x first. I, I prefer to do delta x first because you need to find it first anyway. So this was from two to four, so delta x would be four minus two over the number of rectangles, which will be infinity. So that's delta x. F of x would be next, but we can't write x. So the equation is three 
times whatever x is squared minus 1. And x is a, which in this case was 2, plus delta x, uh, which is 2 over n, times k. It's going to be the exact same setup every time. The hardest part is writing the function with this goofy x value. But if, if you can try to remember that this lo hard looking part is just an x value, then it goes pretty easy. Now it asks you to find the value. That means it wants you to actually do this on the calculator. You can't type this portion into your calculator unless you have an inspire. Actually, I think Inspire CAS is the only one that can do it. I don't think a regular Inspire can. Um, three x squared minus one from two to four. If you don't like doing the graph, is the graph way working fine for you? Yeah. Okay, because it doesn't even have to actually be on your screen to do work. So if that way doesn't work, I can actually show you how to do it from the home screen. It's just kind of weird. So when you plug it into the equation, like on the calculator, do you not need to put the um, delta x like times delta x after? Uh, no, because you're not typing in the summation. So, yeah, correct. The portion on the left is actually the only thing the calculator can do. Okay, try number two on your own. If you feel like number one went okay. So two over n is actually just a number it's because it's the width of the rectangle. So a number multiplier can be written in the front. You don't need to do it all. Yeah, you can't do it by hand because you have an infinite number of rectangles. So the, the, the 0, 1, 2 wouldn't be plugged into the summation because the summation is talking about which rectangle. This is trying to tell you where to begin and end reading it, but that is, it's weird conversion. Summation. Uh, so you can't do it on couple because you can't put infinity in place of n. So when you do your another calculator, you actually have to do the integral from zero to two of two x cubed. That's the only way to figure these ones out. And honestly, this is the only section we're going to talk about summation ever. After this, you never will see. Uh, yes, if if it helps <coughs> boost your spirits. 6.2 is the only section in this entire pack, all of our packets, that we're going to do summation notation. This is just leading us to figure out where integrals come from. So we do integrals from here on out. That's why this ends up being kind of a difficult section, because it's the only time you do it, and it's hard to remember after a while. OK, does anybody help need filling out B? Do you want me just to write the answer up there so you can check yourself? Uh, what do we got? I don't know what the actual number answer is. Eight. Okay. When you 
Can you make the negative two and three? Would you make the negative two and three? Sure. Okay. You don't need to. Okay, I'll leave that answer up there for a minute. Feel free to ask away if you couldn't figure out part of it. Is it always going to be K? Yep. Uh, no. So if you wanted to, you could do zero to n minus one. Left hand. But most everybody gets really annoyed writing 0 to n minus 1. So everybody just writes 1 to n. But you can write both. Yeah? Uh, how do you get positive 2 over n for dumb x? Uh, 0 minus negative 2. It's always going to be the top number minus the bottom number. Well, a bigger number minus a smaller number. Um, if nothing, the width of a rectangle can't be negative. I mean, you can think about it that way if you need to. Do you guys want me to move on to the next part? Or do you want me, does anybody want me to leave this up there yet? I mean, I certainly can. Okay. There's really only one other section here, <clears throat> and it's when you're given the definite integral, it's when you're given the summation notation and you want to write it as the integral. It seems like this should be easier. For some people, this is kind of <laughs> hazy. So five is going to be how wide the whole thing is. But the problem is it, it's not necessarily going from zero to five. So five is the entire width. That's B minus A. If you remember in place of the, why did they write it that backwards? If you remember in place of the X is the equation A plus delta XK. So A, in this case, is negative 2. Are we okay with that part? Because if you know what A is, that's the number on the bottom of the integral. And then we're going to use the 5, because B minus A is 5, so we're going to add 5 on to negative 2. And that's because I know that the width is 5. So we've got A and B figured out. <clears throat> and then this is the part where some people, it's hard for them to picture in their head. Other people absolutely see it right away. It's just, it's kind of weird. Um, if I erase this stuff, if you remember, I talked about how this entire thing stood for x. So the equation that was used was 5x minus 1. So that entire parentheses is always just going to be the x. And at the very end, you're supposed to write dx, even though I know you don't know what that is yet. Basically, this portion at the end is just a way of saying that x is the variable. Some people will find this direction of conversion much easier. The hardest part is traditionally figuring out the numbers on the integral. The equation usually is the easiest part to spot. Do you want me to go through the next one with you? No? Oh. Okay, well, I think some do. Number three, C. There is no C. Is it on the next page? Oh, just because it's trig. It's trig, so you hate it right away. My goodness. Wait, what? Oh, okay, let me look at it first. Uh, pi 6 over n is where I would start because that's going to be 
b minus a over n. Um, this tells me that pi over 6 is the width of the whole thing. Um, k pi over 6n. Uh, this means the starting spot is zero. So pi over 6n was, was the delta x, and then there's just a k. So they never, they never the, the x. Can't, because there's an addition, addition, one is addition, one is mul multiplication. Oh, that would be pretty mean if they did do that. I don't, I've never seen it. Okay. Yeah. They usually try to leave it unsimplified so that you can see what's what. Yeah, A would be zero because there is no plus anything right here. <clears throat> so our integral would be from zero, and then pi six is the entire width. So since it starts at zero, that's easy. I'm just gonna add pi six onto zero. And then the equation is cosine of x. Uh, one thing I, oh, I take that back. It looks like these notes have some that are simplified together. That's the next, that's the next section. Um, I mean, you don't really run into that very often, though. That's kind of harsh. <clears throat> Well, I know one of the n's has to be for the width. And looking at this, um, they both have a square root. So I could technically write it as k over n cubed to the half. But I need one of these n's outside of it. So, Well, that's kind of a weird one. I mean, you can't really square it. I don't know. I wonder if you would take out the cubed. It's no. So k is only going to be in one spot for sure, though. k is only going to be part of the x. But the n is in two spots. The fact that there's no plus anywhere means a is 0. Like, that would be, oh, that's the eraser. Uh, I know for sure this would be 0. Oh, you know what? <clears throat> no, this one's goofy. Uh, this is cubed. That's the part that was making, kind of throwing me off, because n is only going to be in two spots. And it's, if I write the square root of n squared. So if I have k over n to the half, and then separate it as 1 over n squared to the half, this would give me 1 over n. And one would be b minus a, and then uh, would just be x to the half. I I don't know if I ever remember seeing one on the AP test though, where where it was where you had to unsimplify it first. I'll, I'll have to double check on that. There's very few summation questions on the AP test traditionally, like two at the most. Um, and it's usually just one of each direction. But I, I don't think I remember seeing one where you'd unsimplify it. There can't be many examples of this, is there? There is. Mm, I guess I wouldn't stress on that much, too. Like, I wouldn't stress those too much. Because I don't think you're going to have to worry about them on the AP test. 
I mean, some of the stuff in this packet is there to get you prepped for Calc BC as well, like just getting used to el hard algebra. Okay, well, either way, I'm going to stop there. I, I'll double check on the uh, simplification ones. I'll look at, have to look at the past tests.